I give the metaphor of a tree for a company's culture where the behaviors that you want, the ways you want to show up for each other and for customers, these are the roots. And you want to create deep roots because that is what helps the organization thrive and keep growing. And it's a living organism. And so what do we need to do to keep a living organism, not just barely alive, because it's not easy to keep a plant or a tree alive, but thriving. Welcome to the Going North Podcast, the podcast where you will be inspired to join the business of immortality known as authorship. I'm your host, certified self-leadership trainer, member of the Maxwell Leadership Team, and best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, Dominic Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some tips and techniques to advance yourself coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by book number two from Dominic Dom Brightman, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. It is the field guide to help unleash the elite performer that is inside of you. Cop it today on Amazon.com or heading over to DomBreitman.com and snag it in book, ebook, and audio book so that way you can take it on the go and get yourself on the go to your northbound success. And today on the Highlight Real Builder for Authors known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, it's the Going North Podcast, and we got another super special, awesome human for you today, courtesy of the wonderful site PodMatch.com, where they have all the fire and all the matches, and it stays lit with super special, awesome humans, because we got another one, because today's guest is an organizational psychologist, culture expert, and master certified coach, the MCC, baby, she's an MC with an extra C, <laughs> who is a... Also, the principle of strategy meets performance, a wonderful leadership consulting firm that partners with leaders of mid-sized to Fortune 500 organizations to help them create engaging, innovative, and productive cultures, y'all. That's right, productive. And to put the icing on the cake, she's an award-winning leader, y'all, because she's been named Trailblazer of the Year. So in good company with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you know, the trailblazing, eyebrow-raising, elbow-dropping champ, as well as a Citizen of the Year and a voice to listen to because you can also catch her wonderful new number one release book on audiobook where she's reading the book. So double the fun for that one for driving positive change in her community. So let's give it up for the SNN, the one and only Dr. Sharazad Nuravi. How you doing today, Dr. Sherry? Good morning, Dom. I am doing great. I really love your energy and it's wonderful to be here. Yeah, that's right. It's wonderful to have you here. That's right, indeed. You're now in the danger zone. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> I don't know what questions will be asked, and it's all good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. But hey, don't worry. They're usually easy as apple pie or blueberry, if you prefer. Apple is good. Oh, okay. All right. Apple of my eye. I know what you're doing. All right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So my goodness, it's not about Apple, it's a wonderful, sensational share of yourself. So my goodness, as with all bios, not allowed to be 75 days long, and I'm sure there's a whole backstory that actually helps you to get you to where you are today with all the championship belts and the trophies you have for all the folks you've helped. So mind telling us a bit about yourself, now you got to where you are today. Sure. So uh, I'll start from where I am. I'm a business psychologist. I have my own practice named Strategy Meets Performance, which I have started year 12. So that's very exciting. And I started my career. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's a big deal, right? I started my career in HR consulting and talent management. And before I started my own practice, I worked in-house for organizations with um, helping companies manage their talent and grow their talent and training. And I also worked in a consulting firm as a contractor where I worked with Fortune 500 organizations, coaching leaders and facilitating learning. And so I had a foot in both doors and I really enjoyed it. And I decided after many years 
to go back to school to earn my doctorate in organization development because I really wanted to work across the system in an organization and with the culture. And I wanted a little bit more training. And the program I attended was made for practitioners. It was perfect. And when I finished, I launched Strategy Meets Performance. And here we are today and I launched a new book just about a month ago entitled A Powerful Culture Starts With You. And that is my philosophy. That is my philosophy for how leaders can create the culture they want to see that has engaged employees, giving their all, having a sense of ownership, not taking the risk to go to some other company and not knowing will this be as amazing as this one. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. So she loves hitting the books, y'all. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Business psychologist. That means she'll get in the mind of your business and be like, hey, tell me all you know. <laughs> tell me everything. What are the group dynamics? Where are their silos? Why are you mad at that other cross-functional leader? What is it about your thinking that's causing this drama? Let's talk about it. Yeah, exactly. That's right, indeed. So if your business has baby mama drama, she's got you covered, metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> or, or any other kind of drama. <laughs> Which, here's the thing, organizations do have that. And sometimes there's some way that it's being reinforced or something, no one is saying anything about it. And how will you get the best services to your customers if a cross-function people aren't getting along and they're not collaborating and compromising together. And my, of my book, their three model approach, the third one, walk it is about walking the talk, aligning your senior team, making sure you're operating with values and walking the talk is something that employees crave and need and want. I want to create a world where when I tell someone I'm a business psychologist, Dom, Instead of saying, oh, you need to come to my company or you need to coach my boss, I want to create a world. And I, my hope is this book will help in one little way where people will tell me, my culture is amazing. I love it there. I have a voice. I could share when I see something's going wrong. Our CEO is so open. We always know what's going on. We're growing. We're excited. That is what I would love to hear more of. Ah, uh, so you want folks to put you out of business? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Look, it's a funny question that you asked, but it will never happen. <laughs> because you know why? We're human. And here's mm -hmm. the other thing. You can be a brilliant entrepreneur, but where in our life have we been trained to be people leaders? That is in every industry, the hardest part. And we think, Oftentimes it's them, the problem is out there. And the real power lies within to ask yourself, hmm, I wonder if there's a different way I could be looking at this. I wonder if there's a different way I could be showing up. And that is what I help leaders do. That's how you tap into your deepest power, being open, knowing the answers are in here and not out there. Yeah, that's right. People leaders indeed. So indeed, the true people leaders, y'all. That's right. Folks who lead for the people, by the people, who walk their talk indeed. That's right indeed. Mm -hmm. Especially when their walk talks, y'all. I'm telling you. That's right. It's like walking a dog when their talk walks. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing indeed. It's amazing indeed. So speaking of those people, you got this wonderful, wonderful title for folks in your wonderful book, Culture Guardian. So am I going deeper into what that entails? Absolutely. So I came up with the term culture guardians because over the years, as I have coached leaders and worked with teams, I would notice that there are some people and some of them are formal leaders. Some of them are informal leaders. And when things were not going well, or they had a sense that there's a potential problem brewing, a culture guardian is someone who will go to his or her leader and say, listen, I have some concerns, here's why, and here's some potential solutions we should take now. It's someone who has become so invested in the organization 
and treats it as if it's their own. And when we talk about engagement, a culture guardian is highly engaged and is saying, look, we're all here working hard and we're serving our customers and our community. How could we make sure we're doing it in the best of ways? And they are feeling so deeply for this organization that they want to make sure that any potential problem could be solved and resolved quickly. And so these are, and, and can you have people become interested in becoming culture guardians? Absolutely. Some people naturally want to, but they may not have approached you about it. But these are folks who are listening, paying attention, having conversations and caring. And you want as many of them on your team as you can have. Ah, uh, there you go. That's definitely true, definitely true. It's like you got to give a metaphorical fighting stick sometimes, you know, so that way, you know, protect the culture, make sure things are good for the organization, just really hiring the right people to keep the culture going. Because, heck, even heck, even so, companies may be like, hey, we just want to get things done. Why well, we need a good, positive work culture in these culture gardens? Can't we just, like, be regular business and be like hey we're a family even though we're kind of not a family <laughs> yeah. no it's a great question that you asked dom and here's the thing i give the metaphor of a tree for a company's culture where the behaviors that you want the ways you want to show up for each other and for customers these are the roots and you want to create deep roots because that is what helps the organization thrive and keep growing and it's a living organism. And so what do we need to do to keep a living organism, not just barely alive, because it's not easy to keep a plant or a tree alive, but thriving is we give attention to it. We water it. We make sure it's got the right nutrients. And when you do that, then people want to stay in your organization. And what are the downsides of not caring for your organization and your culture? Your good people will leave. It costs triple their salary to recruit someone, train someone, get them to that same level of performance. So it's a loss of institutional knowledge and capability when your high performers leave. That right there is a huge reason to take care of your culture. Every time people have to start working with new teams again, you don't know what kind of dynamics are going to happen. When people aren't engaged, they're not engaging your customers. Maybe they'll call them back in a day or two and not with that strong giving attitude, right? And customers have a lot of options, right? So there's a lot of ways that if you are training your people, making sure they understand the vision and the values, making sure they know the direction, they have the tools and resources they need, they feel connected to their other colleagues, whether you're virtual or in person or hybrid, we spend so much of our time at work. And how do we make it a place that is joyful? For many people, flexibility is so important to take care of family members and be able to take them places and just manage their lives. People have told me, my company cares so much about me and the flexibility. I don't think I could just go anywhere else. And so it's creating that sense of caring where people feel they belong and that it is a bit of a family. It is an environment where they feel cared about and so they want to give more. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That's definitely a beautiful thing because that's really one of the major reasons for the great resignation nowadays where a lot of folks are like hey this darn pandemic forced me to stay home if i wasn't quote unquote essential and work from home and it's like man i either got more stuff done at home or i felt better at home or found something better so my goodness is definitely a big necessity for companies to care i guess that's <laughs> one of the reasons that's why both care and companies are spelled with c's <laughs> exactly and here's the thing Yes, there is a resignation, but I also know there's many companies where people are staying in place and enjoying their company. So let us not forget about that. And let us ask, what are those companies doing? People are smart, they're logical, 
And if your company has been extremely successful, many companies were even more successful during the pandemic because these leaders decided we are going to thrive, not just survive. We are going to be agile. Let's do this. And as we've come out of the pandemic, to there's some leaders who will just say, okay, everyone, all that's over. We're all coming back into the office. And people are saying, but what? We were productive, we collaborated, customers were happy. Is that the wisest choice to 100% bring it all back? And so people have changed their lives as a result of the pandemic. They realized they could live in other places where rent is much less or cost um, of housing is much less. And they're saying, and it worked, you know? So, so lifestyles have changed, life philosophies have changed. And many companies, have continued on having their um, workers be virtual and have seen success. And some have gone hybrid, which look dumb. I think whenever you can bring people together every so often, especially if they're spread everywhere, for them to know each other, meet each other in person, build the relationship, that will only help your business. And that will make the different technologies we have for communicating even better. Right, but if those relationships haven't been built and there's ways to do it both virtually and in person, then you don't have as cohesive a, a team as you can have. And this is the time, you know, so many companies are thriving being virtual and people have a lot more happiness. I, I've heard over the years, so many clients telling me, I found two additional hours a day minimum where they're not commuting, where they're not you know, going from here to there. And that is a gift and people have appreciated that. Well, yeah, definitely like chew two hours. That'd be freaking amazing. It's like, oh yeah. man, the commute, it's gone, hooray. <laughs> oh darn, for some people the commute is back and people are driving extra stupid, oh God, no. <laughs> people are driving a little bit extra stupid, I've noticed. <laughs> It's like, could they all just stay at home? <laughs> Although oh, I was in, in the Bay Area recently and during rush hour and there was no rush hour. That was interesting. So they must have all been virtual. Oh, heck yeah. Shoot. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, they say home freezes over every once in a while, right? <laughs> 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 oh, man. So my goodness, my goodness. So with this wonderful book, we've already talked about some stuff in the book. What was probably what was the most challenging part about putting it all together? Because you got all this wonderful head knowledge, and I'm sure you got a lot of creative ideas that keep yeah. on popping out of your head in the middle of writing something else. What was it like putting it together and finally hitting that publish button and for the world to devour the wonderful book? Yeah, no, thank you for asking. So, you know, it was a project I started a Few years ago and I would write for a while and then not really touch it for a while I'd get busy with some big client project and then someone would say hey Shahzad how's that book and I would say oh yeah let me let me get back on it and and the thing that I would wish for Dom was just quiet time more quiet time and then guess what the pandemic happened and I said to myself <laughs> if you can't do it now then you have a problem so I really took advantage of that extended quiet time that we all had and I wrapped it up and I learned that if you stay on some sort of schedule, you can write a book much quicker. And um, once you've written one and you've gotten through, you know, some of the self-doubt of hasn't every book been written and no, it has not. And it hasn't been written by me, it hasn't been written by the individual who's interested. And guess what? People want to learn new things and new concepts and hear new voices. So once you do one and you get through the whole process, then the next one is going to be so much easier. So I'm already thinking of book two and book three. There we go. That's what I'm talking about indeed. Yeah. Any idea what to expect for books two or three? Will there be a dolphin on the cover on one of them? Um, I don't know why. What's the concept of the dolphin? Oh, I have no idea. I guess happy, oh, okay. happy culture. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I see. oh, okay. <laughs> Honestly, okay. Thank you for making that connection because dolphins are 
the happiest animals. They communicate extremely well and they build communities. So th there you go. Um, no, so this first book, and I, I would love to share the three model approach in a moment is about how to create a really powerful culture. The second book I have in my mind is for creating an environment where female leaders can thrive. And a lot of the book will have conversations I have with female executives and the thinking they have. And a lot of it's just been brought down from just our gender and our society. And there's an opportunity for women to take more risks, to speak up more, to stop feeling that mom guilt. I hear about that a lot. And I'm, I'm wondering, what is that? Because I'm not a mom, I'm a god mom, but I wonder what that is. So there are things that are very common to female leaders that I'm going to explore and help them reframe, help us all reframe. The third book, Dom, I want to have about teamwork at home. How about that? Because oh. we are whole. What we do at home impacts us at work. What we do at work impacts us at home. And I believe my model, three model approach, which I, which I could share in a moment, does apply to our home lives. So that's the, the trilogy I have in mind. Would it be okay if I uh, shared this three part model real quick? Yeah, let us know how we can be better homies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so the first model of a powerful culture starts with you is a tool for looking at your culture. So over the years, as I've given talks to CEO groups and leadership groups, they've said, I get what it feels like when a culture is really strong, but where do I start? Tell me what to do. And I said, that is a great ask. And so I love things that have steps that help you go through them, that have checklists. And I thought, what better thing for busy executives? So the first step, watch it, is how you can look at your culture how you could walk around, ask questions, be open to taking in feedback. You'll notice the H of watch it is handle your ego because oh, that's man. a part of our brain uh -huh, that wants to <laughs> tell us they don't know what they're talking about. And if we're able to say, listen, let's be open, let's get some feedback in, let's process it, then you'll have a chance to create a new plan. And, and really thrive and take charge. And the Watch It model has different checklists that you could download on a powerfulculture.com where you are examining your space. You're examining the communications that are coming from your top leaders. What is the employee experience like? Do people have their environment ready when they arrive on their first day? Is there a career plan? Do they have tools and resources? How do they get promoted? And the last one, group dynamics. What's happening in the meetings? Who's talking? Who's not talking? How do you create inclusion where you're making sure everyone, whether they're an individual contributor, a leader, a person of color, a female, like everyone can be heard. Because when we see group dynamics, sometimes there's a certain group that is talking and others don't feel as comfortable. And is the environment being made comfortable to speak up and to share ideas. And so these checklists, if you download them and go through them with a few of your formal and informal leaders, maybe a couple culture guardians, you're gonna get a good idea about your culture. I wanted tools right then and there that people could use. Ah. The second model, Drive It, is a coaching model. Again, this could be downloaded on a powerfulculture.com. Each step, has questions because how many people will go through 125 hours of coach training and then some, not that many, but Don, how many of us must coach every day, whether it's with our colleagues, our peers, our children, our spouses, right? How do we know what questions to ask? And so the steps that I have are first helping the person determine what is it exactly that's bothering me? Sometimes we know exactly what it is. Sometimes we don't. We, we think it's something. Can I talk through it? It's in the back of my head. And so it's asking questions to bring it to the surface. Reflect on what, what making this change would mean to you is a chance to dream. Dream that you resolve this thing, whether it is you started that business, you got promoted, you improved a relationship with a, a family member, that's not going well, right? Like imagine it's going well, what's happening, right? And, and when we could dream it, when we could visualize it, 
something in our brain starts wanting to do things to attract it to ourselves. The step invite a new way of thinking is, hmm, how else can I be looking at this? Is there a more positive lens I can look, to, look at this through? So it's exploring our thinking. Valiantly get out of your comfort zone is, listen, if this were an easy thing to do, you would have done it already. And there's a great likelihood that you have to get out of your natural energy zone. Maybe you're a high introvert and you want to achieve things that require you to turn up that extroversion. And so will it be a little bit out of your comfort zone? It will. But if you have found the why for it, then you just keep pushing one step at a time. And then I talk about engaging support because there are people waiting to support you and you should continue supporting them. Taking one little step, initiate the first step and last transforming your thinking so you can know as you are on this journey to do something big and new and great that it will be tough and that's okay. And to acknowledge that it's part of the journey. So that is the drive it model. And there are questions for each step and I encourage everyone to download it and play with it and, and just get comfortable with it. And if you do it enough, some of those questions are gonna start coming to you naturally. And the last one, Dom, this is about watching our leaders walk the talk. This model for senior leaders is making sure they are aligned, they're looking at the culture, they have a plan and values are a part of it of how they make decisions. And when the leadership team is able together to be on one page and have healthy debate and make decisions that they all support one another on, that's where you can have a really engaging culture because you won't hear your chief technology officer saying, okay, we need to make this big change. And then the CFO or the CMO, chief marketing officers say, we don't really need to do that, you guys. If you just ignore it, it'll go away. That yeah. is toxic. And it happens. It, does. it happens. You know it. Lots. And who wants to see that? I, what's more disengaging and, and puts the employee in a bad mood when there's one leader who is promoting one thing and moving forward with energy and the other ones are saying, ah, don't worry about it. What is that? You know, and so... We want to create environments in those senior team meetings where there's healthy debate, where everyone's voice is heard, a good plan is created. And some leaders may say, I don't really like this part of the plan. And that's okay to share it. But guess what? We all have to show up aligned together. We have to support this together. And when I talked about my third book, this walk it, can you see it working in a family environment where the parents? are walking the talk and you, the kids can't say, well, mom said, no, let me ask dad, right? No, everyone is staying on the same page. So I do see some um, ways that teamwork and leadership at work is similar to it at home. Oh yeah, you're definitely right. Funny enough, I actually just got finished listening to uh, Dr. Joe DeSena's book, uh, The 10 Rules of Resilience for family and he talked about that a lot and mm -hmm. how he actually has to set the tone for his kids to follow yeah. and that walk it is basically aligns yeah. with that as an example of hey you got to really walk your talk if you don't feel like getting up in the morning you have to make sure you still get yourself up in the morning before you get your kids up and if you want to meet their vegetables make sure you're eating your vegetables as the parent too just small That's stuff right. like that <laughs> don't be eating potato chips and telling your kids to eat the vegetables <laughs> exactly <laughs> and don't call the potato chips vegetables <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's vegetables fried. It's okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That is That's what right. people want in our families, in our communities, from our leaders, from our officials. That is what we want. We want people to walk the talk. We want real leadership. And that comes from going deep within and realizing that that is where it all starts. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And day starts from within, y'all. That's right. You can't go without because the without is going to come from within. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Messy desk means something's messy in yourself. You got to take care <laughs> of it. That's right, indeed. 
It may be a sign of creativity, but it's a sign of something else. You never know. <laughs> you must have a messy desk too. <laughs> no, it's pretty. I can't think. If it's if anything in my area is messy, I can't think. So it's just one of my quirks. <laughs> Oh, man. So, my goodness, so since you've been doing these interviews to promote the good work you're doing now and forevermore in the future to come, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're on the guest side of the game on these podcasts? Oh, great question. What's possible when you're open, I think, is the question I'd like to be asked. Ah, yeah. So, and do you want to technically ask it yeah no go talk? ahead and ask go ahead and answer go ahead <laughs> so so when we are open to share what we are challenged with we then have a chance to deconstruct it and make sense of it and i have a client where she's a, a bright leader and she said i don't feel comfortable speaking up to my executive team, yet she is great at giving presentations and, and she's just really gifted. And, and I explored that with her and I learned, and this is something we all may have at times, that she had had bad experiences doing that before, where there was a boss that she was trying to speak up and trying to speak up. And basically it was a very toxic boss and it was a toxic environment she was in and she was trying to prove herself and it was never going to happen and so sometimes we learn ways of showing up and it, it becomes part of our nervous system and then we are afraid to take new risks or to speak up because we think we're going to face the same problem and so when you are open to exploring where you're stuck and you're working with a um, professional someone who's an expert coach or business psychologist who can help you bring it to the surface you can now understand yourself better and why you're stuck and you could take new choices because there are times Dom where leaders whether it's the c-suite or directors or managers can just feel like they they are frustrated with the situation but they don't know what to do and oftentimes when you're working with a professional to figure it out, then you could see what is it from within that you can work on. Some CEOs think, well, they've been brought up in an environment where they have seen kind of a top-down approach that wasn't collaborative. And sometimes we go with what we know until we see, wait a minute, I don't think this is working. So to be open is the key to life, to be open to learning new ways of doing things, to exploring our mindset. So many leaders say this Gen Z, oh, listen to them. They just want to get promoted right away. They're, they're worried about their feelings. So it is a different generation. And guess what? Let's stop talking like they're going to go away. There is every generation has had experiences that cause them to think a certain way, show up a certain way, stand up for certain things. And, and what I would like to say about that is let us learn, right? Because every generation, if you think about the generation you were in was judged. There was a time where Gen Xers and I'm Gen X were told, um, oh, they just, they just wanna make sure they have work-life balance as if, as if it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing. But that is what we faced. And we wanted many of the things millennials want where they, they're asking for balance. They're asking their companies, how do you give back? They want a collaborative environment, but we didn't have the words for that. And then millennials do. And now Gen Z are bringing their values, which a whole generation has been raised with technology and has seen just so many difficult things in our society and politi political wise. And so, they have a right to be who they are. Each generation has a right. And instead of us judging them, and I hear a lot of judgment, how about we learn about them? How about we think about why do I think this way? And where might I come up with a new way of looking at this and showing up for these leaders who are good people, who have different views, and that's okay. That's how we could be more 
inclusive. And that is a part of accepting diversity is generation. So um, my, my response to that question, Dom, is how can we be more open and curious and be lifelong learners? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Lifelong learners, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Funny enough, I would have pinned you for one of the older millennials, not a Gen Xer. <laughs> That's right, Dave. That's right, Dave. So, my goodness. So, speaking of being open, been loving to drop this question on folks. So, if your wonderful book, A Powerful Culture, starts with you, if it was a food, what would it be and why? Oh, wow. A food? Well, it would be a buffet. It would be food from a buffet because it's savory. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I have to say there's Persian food in there. It's savory and juicy and wonderful, but it's it's fun and it's tasty. So there's chocolate in there <laughs> and it's nutritious. So vegetables are roasted in there and fruits are part of it. So I the way I wanted it to be experienced, and it's on Audible and Kindle and soft cover and will be on hardcover. The way I wanted it to be experienced is that you're reading it. I have case studies where I'm talking about a conversation I had with the client, what I said, the client, what the client said, what I was thinking and, and what ended up happening as the client grew and what are some tips and what are questions you could ask yourself. And so I wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be easy to understand. I think there's so many books that are um, vague or there's there's theories and you think well what do I do with this theory so I, I I think it's something that I hope is appetizing I hope people find parts of it this is delicious I want to keep eating and reading this book so that was my um, intent to make it that you read some you go through the questions you try the new behaviors then you go to the next step and at the end you say that was a great meal ah <laughs> uh, yeah that's right so indeed a great meal indeed that's right with all the nutrients that's right you'll feel like you have great roots y'all that's right you have great tree roots indeed that's right that's right indeed and then you'll feel like leaving from the book and conquering the world that's right, that's right indeed. indeed yes oh yeah that's right might even change colors on the way let me stop <laughs> But you, it, it is it is intended to make the reader feel powerful. Whether you are a CEO, a people manager, maybe you're new to this company or you're just starting out your career. Culture is about everyone and it's about all of our responsibilities to speak up and to try to make it better. So I do want people walking away feeling strong and empowered and knowledgeable. Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking about, indeed. That's right, that power and that knowledge, y'all. That's right, indeed. That's right, the good doctor's got you covered. You'll have those six-pack business abs ready, or should I say those six-pack <laughs> culture abs, y'all. You'll be full culture guardian level 99, folks. I'm telling you, she's got you covered. She's got you covered, y'all. That's right, indeed. So we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but you're still in 2022, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, I love this, Dom. You're so creative. The advice I would give myself is you've got this. Stop worrying. You are resourceful. Keep going at it. You're going to figure it out. Ah, there you go. That's right. You got this, y'all. That's right. That's right, indeed. They don't call her sensational Sherry for nothing, y'all. That's right. She's got this, y'all. <laughs> That's right, indeed, with both hands, y'all. That's right, like a basketball. She's got it, y'all. That's right, indeed. And I know folks need to get this magical book at all freaking farms. So for those who need to do just that and keep up with your journey and all that you're doing and be on the lookout for those other two-plus books, because I'm pretty sure you probably got five more books in your way to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the best way for folks to keep in contact with you? <laughs> yeah, the best way to keep in contact my. Email is Sharzad, S H A H R Z A D, at strategy meets performance.com. My company's name, the website is strategy meets performance.com. And then uh, the, the forms and tools 
from the book can be found at the book website, apowerfulculture.com. Well, there you have it. Folks are going to put the links to the Good Docs websites in the show notes indeed be sure to cop some goodies from the good doc herself that's right if you want to be on the go since you're a professional on the go she's reading the book herself and she's got a great voice i mean it's going to be a great audiobook yours truly Thank copped you. it weeks ago and is thoroughly enjoying it indeed that's right enjoying it with an i in that's because it comes from within y'all that's right indeed that's nice. right indeed. <laughs> That's right, bad spelling and all. So any harding words before we close up shop, Doctor? Well, I want to thank you, Dom, for bringing knowledge out into the world and your positive energy. This has probably been the most fun podcast out of the many podcasts I've had. So I want to thank you. Thanks a bunch for tuning in and setting aside some of your time to listen to this wonderful podcast, Going North. If you really enjoyed what you heard, do me a solid and share this with your network and someone that you care about that would get something out of it too. And be sure to subscribe to hear more and heck, even check out the backlog if you would like because there are hundreds of episodes to choose from and they just keep getting better and not better. 